Hey everybody, welcome to Rust Admin Academy. Question of the day. How do I update my server when Face Punch says that I have to without wiping my map or wiping my player's progress? So essentially, how do I run my Rust server without ever having to wipe it? Today, I'm gonna to show you a method of doing exactly that that should work most of the time. All right, so I get this question a lot. People want to be able to run their Rust server, and especially when they're starting out with really low population, they may not necessarily want to wipe their server every month. And as we all know, Facepunch forces us to wipe our server on the first Thursday of each month as they push out their newest updates. It forces a map wipe and it undoes all of the player's progress that we have on our map. And that doesn't necessarily work for a lot of server owners, especially when they're first starting out. So today I'm happy to show you a method that will allow you to do exactly that. And I'd also like to point out the fact that it's not me that came up with this process. It was my good friend Dennis over at icehost.com that actually figured this out. So before I get too far into actually how to do this, I want to explain something to you. In the past, there has been a way to do this, and I'm sure there are people out there that are doing this exact same method. They just don't want to tell anybody how they're doing it because it makes them special. And it is important for a server owner, once they find something that makes their server different from everyone else's, to hang on to that. So I don't blame them for not giving this information out freely. But there are previous methods that that have worked in the past. There's a method of using a custom map where you could save all of your player bases, etc., etc. This way is much, much simpler. And it's also something that you can decide to do on wipe day, whether you actually want to wipe your map or not, and still be able to perform your update. So now after Dennis actually showed me what we have to do in order to make this happen, it seems so silly to me that nobody has caught on to this before. Or like I said before, maybe somebody already has caught on to this and just aren't telling anybody about it. So if you use your file manager and just navigate to wherever your server files are hosted, you're going to see something quite interesting in there. So mine is in the Rust folder and there we go. So this folder right here is where all of the map information is saved, where all your player blueprints are saved, basically everything fundamental to the saving of your map. This is where this is hosted. So and if you have a look at these file names, you're going to notice something interesting about them. There's a number at the end of each one of our saves. So if we go down to the procedural map, so this is the map save for my test server right here. So it's procedural map, it's size 2500, and this is the map seed right here. This number right here at the end before the dot map is what I'd like to bring your attention to. This is essentially the update version that Facepunch currently has. So if you do some real simple math on that, at the time of the recording of this video, Facepunch has done 203 updates. And because I know people are gonna notice this, so if we go to player blueprints, you can see there's a four at the end of the blueprints file. So what does that mean? That means Facepunch has wiped blueprints four times. So now that you know that about blueprints, I just want you to forget about that because what we're gonna do today has nothing to do with blueprints. Just forget it. I'm just showing you how to read the information that's right in front of us. So let's just pretend for right now that today is actually March 6th. It's not, but March 6th is the next forced update from Facepunch. So how would we update our server and not wipe our map and our player states? So it's wipe day, face punch has pushed out their update. We need to update our server. So the first thing that we're gonna do is shut down our server. If you have players on your server at the time of the shutdown, you probably wanna do a save right before you actually hit the shutdown button. And then we need to go back into our file manager and we need to rename some of these files. So because we're at version 203 right now, and in March, we're gonna to move to version 204, you just need to rename the applicable files to version 204 before you update and restart your server. So which files do we need to change the names of? So what I suggest you do is you wanna do player states and you wanna do anything that is a map save, just to be safe. Another way to look at this would be to rename any of the files that have the current version number as it stands right now. So in my case, case at this point in time, it's at version 203 and we're going to move to version 204. But if you're watching this video in the future, past March 2021, this number is going to be different. It's going to be 204, 205, 206, etc, etc. Just make sure you make a note of what the version currently is before you start this process. So I'm going to rename player states to version 204. I'm going to rename my proc gen to 204 and I'm going to continue doing this to all of these files right here that are currently at 203. So as you can see on the screen there, I've renamed all of the files that had version 203 on it to version 204. Now, if you're doing this on a forced update day by face punch, at this point, you would then be able to update your server and then restart your server. So whatever process that you're used to using in the past for updating your server, you can now go ahead and do that same thing. In the example of using iced host, they have a built-in updater. So every time you restart your server, it 
automatically updates your server and Oxide if you have Oxide installed and then proceeds with the server restart. Now, I can't restart this server right now because I'm doing this before the March 6th update. Therefore, version 2.04 doesn't even exist yet. Well, it does, but we don't have access to it. So this process is only going to work on a forced update day by face punch. So now that I have all my files renamed to what they need to be for the newest version that's coming out, I could then go back and restart my server and everything would be fine. All of the players would be in the location that they were before the update. All their bases are still going to be there. All of their inventories are still going to be there. Everything is going to be just like it was before you push the update. Now, there is a bit of important information you need to recognize here. For the most part, this process is going to work. Obviously, when you're doing this, you don't want to change your map seed and you don't want to change your map size. You don't want to change anything that has anything to do with the map. If it does, it's going to regenerate a new procedural map save and it's going to try and place your players back in those locations. So you would probably end up with bases being generated inside of hills, mountains, under the map, inside of monuments. It would just be a complete disaster. So don't change your map seed. Don't change your map size. Now, that all being said, those are all variables that you have control of. There is a variable that you have zero control over. Let's say Face Punch pushes out an update that regenerates how the terrain is generated. A good example of that exact situation happening was when they added not the main ring road, but the little offshoot roads that they added. That situation right there would have made it so that the map regenerated itself. So while the map might have stayed the same, there are some features of it that would have changed during that update that could screw up this process. So if Face Punch puts out an update that changes how the map is generated, then this process isn't going to work for you. You're going to know right away if it didn't work. If you go into your server and the bases aren't where you think they should be, or worse yet, you have bases that are populating under the map, or like I said before, inside of monuments or something like that, then you know that this process is not going to work during that white period. So just know that for the most part, this process will work for you right up until the point Face Punch pushes out a new generation of the map. And then at that point in time, you're going to have to do a full map wipe. And unfortunately, your players are going to lose everything. Does this process happen often? No, not really. But there's no way to know when they're actually going to push an update like that that actually causes this issue. And not that it's an issue. It's just the nature of the beast. It's just the way things are. We're basically circumventing the way Face Punch wants us to do things. So don't look at this like it's actually a problem because it's not it's just the natural course of things but if we can work around face punch and get things accomplished the way that we want to do them then that's what we're going to do that's what this community is all about is finding different ways of doing things and speaking of communities if you're not already part of my discord make sure you join my discord there's a link in the video description down below and if you'd like to help support the channel so that i can continue bringing you videos just like this one make sure you check me out at patreon.com slash srt bull remember to like comment and share this video let's all do our part in order to make the algorithm happy which which then of course makes me happy. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys all again real soon. I put out a brand new video every Friday at 5 p.m. Mountain Time. So until then, stay safe, make good choices, and I'll see you guys next Friday.